Today we're taking a look at another bind and fly, but this time it's a small one, and specifically this, the new Firefly 1S Nano Baby Quad from Flywoo. Now, not only does this quad come with Express LRS built in, but it is also digital ready as well. And the model you can see here comes pre-fitted with the Avatar HD system. Don't worry though, if you're not someone who flies Avatar, you can also get this with HD Zero as well. Just before we start, I do need to make sure that you are fully clear in the fact that I did receive this quad for free from Flywheel. However, I have not been paid for making this video. They have not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so jumping in and taking a closer look at the quad itself, first of all. So as I've said, this model here is the one pre-fitted with the Avatar HD system. You can see that VTX located there on the top. You can see it's got the heat spreader moved off the chipset. We've got the camera up front here, and then we've got the dual board setup with the VTX on top, and then our main flight controller, our AIO below. Underneath, we've got a little battery strap with our connector, and then we've got our Express LRS antenna, because this is the Express LRS version. Now, motor-wise, this comes pre-fitted with the Robo 1002 19,800kV motors. You can see that with the labels around there, which look nice. We've got the standard shaft mechanism. The flight controller on board this is the Goku F411 Express LRS edition. It's a version two of that and it has the Express LRS receiver built in already, but this time it is not connected via SPI. It is connected via the UART2, meaning that you will be able to update the firmware and you're not going to be restricted by any of those beta flight issues that we've seen in the past with the SPI receivers. Now it's built on a carbon fibre frame, you can see that runs all the way around there. And largely, that really is all there is to show. We've got our VTX antenna on the top, obviously our camera with our adjustable angle there, and then our battery strap and our battery connector down there as well. Now, battery-wise, Flywheel recommend using this with their 450 milliamp hour ones. They did include a couple of these with the kit that I got. I don't believe you get them as standard. These are HV LiPos and they are 1.71 watt hour, 4.35 volt LiPos. And they also have a specific charger available for this as well. And we'll take a look at that a little bit more in a minute. Now also included with this little quad, we get a bunch of accessories. We've got our prop guards, which they include in the pack. We've got some additional spare screws, which is nice to see. We've got a USB cable for updating our HD Avatar VTX. And then we've got a bag with additional accessories in. There's another battery strap in there. And there's a whole host of other stuff I haven't actually opened yet myself. We've got our props. We've got our mountings for installing other bits, M2 bolts, nice to see. And then we've got our second battery strap there as well. Now the battery connectors on this quad are the A30 and they have their own charger available for this as well with six base. So we've got this one here, which is a 1S LiPo charger with a USB-C input, which is really just nice and convenient. We have that A30 connection on the top and we've got six of them and we've got the PH 2.0s down the sides if you want to use them as well. The charger comes in this nice Perspex case. You've got the PCB in the middle, plastic on the corners with the board sandwiched in the middle. If we flip it over, you can see there the individual chargers. We've got the model number and the details down there as well. And it's just nice having a easy to use portable charger with a USB connection available if you want to use it. But obviously you could use any charger with these batteries as long as they support that 8030 connector. Now, out the box, this quad comes pre-installed with Betaflight version 4.41, and I don't see any good reason for you to need to change that. However, I do need to bind this to my radio. There are several ways of doing that for Express LRS, but in this video, I'm going to do it via the Wi-Fi configuration page. Now, to demo this, I'm just going to plug in the USB cable in the bottom. We're not going to use this for configuration. We're simply going to use this to power the quad up. When I plug it in, you will see that there are some LEDs on this side here. You can see we have LED red and there is a green one there as well. But over here, if I lift it up and rotate, you will see that there is a little green flashing one there. And that 
is the Express LRS receiver LED. And what we're doing is we're waiting for it to enter the Wi-Fi mode. If you don't know how Express LRS works, it has a built-in Wi-Fi mode that allows you to do the firmware updates and configuration. And whilst there are many different ways of binding an Express LRS receiver to your radio, I prefer to do it via the Wi-Fi configuration. So what we're going to do is wait for that LED to go into a rapid flash that usually takes about 20 seconds. And once that happens, I'll then be able to see it on my Wi-Fi network. So as you can see now, that LED is flashing rapidly. And if I hop over to the desktop and now you can see under my wireless network list, you can see Express LRS receiver or RX is showing. Now, just to be clear, you will need a PC with a built-in Wi-Fi adapter to be able to do this, whether that be a laptop or a desktop like I've got here with a Wi-Fi adapter. So what we're gonna do, is click connect and then we'll go to the Express LRS homepage. So now it's connected and I've gone to the web page which is 10.0.0.1 and you can now see that it shows the Express LRS screen. Now the first thing we can do is take a look at what the target is. It's currently showing as a generic ESP8285 2.4 gigahertz receiver and it is running firmware version 3.2.0. It's a little earlier than what I've got on my boxer but that will be absolutely fine. What I'm going to do though is now configure it to work with my radio and I'm going to put my binding phrase into here. So I'm simply going to paste. You can then see that the binding phrase is shown and then I'm going to simply click save and reboot. Now it's rebooted, you can see that the LED has gone solid. I've gone into the Express LRS configuration app on my radio and you can now see that it is showing connected. It's working fine. And if we now just check it in beta flight, we should have all of our stick movements showing correctly. Now out of the box, the Firefly appears to come with Betaflight version 4.4.1. Now I would usually say you don't need to update this because it's a bind and fly. However, my one has come unconfigured. When I actually connect it to Betaflight and plug in the USB and then take a look under the settings such as ports, you'll notice that there are no UARTs or anything actually showing. Now, after a bit of back and forth with Flywoo and talking with the guys at Betaflight, it seems that the target that is being used on this flight controller doesn't have the correct gyro set. That is because Flywoo have changed the gyro on the board and when you install the target, it won't work. What you then need to do is install the CLI dump that they will provide you and that then brings in the correct settings. Further to that, they've actually released a new CLI dump for this aircraft that actually improves its overall flight performance compared to the original one and whilst I would usually say you shouldn't touch the settings on a bind and fly in this case I would actually advise downloading the latest CLI dump and installing that on this aircraft because the overall tune has been improved. Now video system wise this quad as I said has the Avatar HD Whoop VTX built in as standard that supports up to 350 milliwatts of RF power and is compatible with the Avatar HD goggles, the Fat Shark Dominator HDs or the Avatar VRX module and it is that digital FPV system that's going to offer you that nice fairly low latency link. I'm not going to say it's the lowest latency in the world but it's fairly stable but it has great image quality as well especially in a quad of this size. Now there are a few quirks with regards to that Avatar HD VTX module that you should be aware of and that is whilst it has up to 350 milliwatts of RF power they don't actually show you that in the menu. The menu system still shows 25, 200, 500, 700 etc. What you need to do though is set it to 500 onwards because that is the maximum RF power you can get out of this VTX unit. Now before using it you should make sure that you've updated the firmware. They do include the firmware update cable with this as well and if you're doing it on the bench powered I strongly suggest you have a fan connected to it as well and binding this to your Avatar HD goggles is really straightforward. You've got the bind button on the side of the VTX. You simply press the bind button on the goggles press the bind button on here and then you're ready to go. Now I'm not going to go through how to upgrade the firmware on this VTX in this video. I do have a separate video on that and if you're interested in seeing it please do make sure you check it out on the channel. Now I've been doing quite a bit of flying with this little quad out and about and here in the studio although it's really not a lot of stuff I can show you but there is some things I just want to demonstrate specifically the difference between what you're seeing in the live feed as well as the onboard DVR and just give you a bit of a feel for the kind of footage that you can get from this little whoop.
Okay, so it's time for me to share with you my thoughts on the Flywheel Firefly 1S. Now, I am not an expert on whoops, but I have flown a few and I'm getting a bit better at judging them. And overall, I think it's a nice at aircraft. It actually handles okay, but the prop wash is not the best in my testing so far. It is better with the new pid tune that they provided as i mentioned earlier however it isn't perfect it's still just a little bit all over the place in that regard although flywheel have recommended trying to change it from four blade props to three blade props and that apparently improves things but it isn't something i've been able to do myself yet as i mentioned earlier when i got it i did have those few quirks with getting it set up because the cli didn't seem to be installed but if you do get that just go on the flywheel website it is actually hiding on there now and and you can download it and install it with the latest tune as well and that should give you the overall better performance what really is the nice little party piece on this is the integrated avatar hd what you're getting is that fantastic image quality decent overall performance obviously with the onboard antenna it is somewhat compromised you saw that in some of the footage that i showed it doesn't always want to penetrate very well however you do get that fantastic image quality although avatar is really good on that side of things there are some quirks with the avatar hd board as well for instance it overheats ridiculously quickly even on the lower power settings and it's a nightmare to get footage off the onboard dvr again due to the overheating even when you've got a fan on it it will overheat every time you try to do it so what you need to do is change it down to say three or four files at a time but what you're not going to be able to easily do in my test is offload say 15 files from the dvr because it simply will overheat halfway through also the usb cable is a faff on this with regards to plugging it in it's easy to get to it's just the connection from avatar hd really isn't good that's nothing really to do with flywheel that's more to do with the 1s board it's not bad it's just got a few quirks that make it more difficult to use than say the larger vtx's but that is to be expected with such a small form factor overall i think it's a nice little aircraft it costs between 230 and 240 dollars depending on the receiver version obviously a lot of that price has been made up via the digital element of this but i think if you're looking to get yourself a little whoop for flying around the house flying around indoors or maybe select outdoor locations it's definitely worth a look now i'm really interested to know what you think in the comments section if you have any questions put it in there and i will try and answer it as well furthermore i want to say a thank you to flywheel for sending this one over and if you're interested in seeing content like this in the future please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel furthermore if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this for instance the videos we've made on avatar hd please do consider checking out the link to my patreon it's only through the support of my patrons i'm able to keep making content on this channel and only through their support was i able to buy the avatar hd goggles and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making videos like this in the future please do consider checking it out anyway that's it for me on this one stay safe i'll speak to you soon